In this video, we'll see how to use the expected value to handle a extended warranty problem. And we won't use Excel, we'll just use the graphing calculator to do calculations. We're going to end up organizing a table in a document because it seems to illustrate the point better. The company estimates that 9% of their products will fail after the original warranty period, but within two years of the purchase, with a replacement cost of $200. They want to offer a two-year extended warranty, what price should they charge so that they'll break even? In other words, so the expected value will be zero. So we want to set up a probability distribution, and we'll have a column for x, the random variable, and then the probability associated with the values of x. And we're going to have two scenarios here. Right? So assume that everybody buys this extended warranty, uh, one of two things will happen. One is that the product fails, and one is that it does not fail. All right, now when the product does not fail, the company only makes a profit. They get the money for the cost of the extended warranty from the customer, and since the product doesn't break, they don't have to do any spending to fix it. The problem is we don't really know what that amount is. So we're going to put in a number, let's just say it's, I don't know, $10. And we will have to change this to see how it affects the problem later. So when the product does not fail, the company gets positive $10, $10 profit. When the product does fail, they still get the $10 but they have to spend 200 to replace the item. So we have 10 minus 200, and this represents a net loss for the company of $190. Now, the probabilities are easily determined because 9% of the products fail. There is a 9% chance the product will fail, so 0.09. And if 9% fail, then 91% do not fail. So 9.91 is the probability it does not fail. All right, to finish up, we will just multiply across. And this is where we would end up using a calculator. So we'll take the negative 190 times 0 0.09. So it's negative 17.1. And multiplying across the second row, 10 times 0.91 gives us 9.1. To get the expected value, we just add that last column down. So we'll take the negative. 17.1 and add 9.1. And as it currently stands, our expected value is negative 8. Remember what this means. This means that in the long run, we expect to lose $8 per warranty. From the company's point of view, that's not very good. The company doesn't want to lose money. Remember, they want that expected value to be zero. The way to make that increase to zero would be to charge more for the warranties. So, since we just need eight more dollars, what do you say we up the price to 18? If the cost of the warranty is 18, then that would be our profit when the product does not fail. And when the product fails, we would then have 18 minus. 200, negative 182. Multiplying to get the new values, we see this number is now 16.38 and 16.38. And of course, those add to zero. When our expected value is zero, that represents the company breaking even in the long run. 
which is what they wanted. So we determined that the cost of the warranty should be set for $18. And take my word that that is correct. <laughs>